I created a shoot 'em up Android game with an inventory system, a galactic map, and many features for customizing your spaceship build. I briefly showcased it in the last video. Now I want to delve deeper into how I made this game. And as you already know from the video title, I'll be adding multiplayer because without it, this is just a useless piece of garbage. Though with it, it's still garbage. Let's start with the fact that I created that Unity project more than two years ago. After working a bit on the basic mechanics of flying and enemies, I completely forgot about the game. Initially, it was supposed to be a simple, goofy, ah, shooter with infinite level generation, where the player could buy upgrades and customize their spaceship. Basically, another one of those thousand games on Play Market about flying ships and enemies. Honestly, I have no idea why I decided to create the thousand and first version of such a game. Over time, as I gained more programming experience, my silly monkey chimpanzee gorilla brain wanted to make a more complex system where the player could potentially create countless builds that would significantly alter the gameplay. This, in turn, should increase replayability and player interest. It would also make my project at least slightly more original. I had a clear vision of the mechanics and essence of the game, so I didn't have any issues with the concept. Ultimately, it turned out that the large number of mechanics I created would lead to new players being utterly confused about what to do in the game. But that's a story for another time. In the video about reworking my game, I showed the main aspects of development without touching on details like monetization, the galactic system, enemy generation, module system devices, weapons, ships, faction selection, tutorial, and so on. I won't be talking about that nonsense in this video either. Thanks for watching. As you can see, almost the entire game interface features a parallax effect. This effect creates an illusion of depth when the camera or any object moves. This effect is often seen in 2D platformers. This is achieved by moving background layers at different speeds. The closer the layer is to the camera, the faster it moves. I applied the same effect to my ships because I have no idea how to create 3D models and it would take much more time to create them. In the end, I really like the effect. And now, I'm satisfied with how the game looks. Just compare the movement of a static image to the final result. A flying ship on the screen is ready, but what do you do with it? To give the game some purpose, it needs an upgrade system. In other words, a player progression system, where your ship's power directly depends on the time spent in the game. However, adding simple buttons like upgrade power or increase fire rate seemed too boring. That's why I decided to add a full-fledged RPG component, an inventory system. From the very beginning, I had the idea to divide all items obtained by the player into three categories, turrets, devices, and modules. Turrets are essentially guns that the player can place in designated combat slots on the ship. Each ship will have its own number of slots, so as you progress, the number of turrets you can equip will increase. Each turret also has its own upgrade level, but currently, there's no way to increase it because I'm a lazy ass. If the game interests at least zero people, I'll definitely think about how to implement upgrades. By the way, thank you all for your support. My channel has already reached zero subscribers. All thanks to you, dear friends. The next category of items after turrets is devices. These are special items that can modify ship or weapon characteristics and grant unique abilities. For example, summoning a helper drone that repairs the ship or assists in combat creating an explosion on the battlefield, or generating coins when the ship takes damage. To clarify, my devices are somewhat similar to Terraria's accessories. Overall, every device, turret, or module should be unique in a way that changes the gameplay. It seems that's the whole point of inventories and similar features. Now, what are modules? They are special enhancements for turrets that can be inserted into any turret and removed just as easily. Each module modifies weapon characteristics in some way adding extra shots, increasing fire rate, boosting critical hit chance, and so on. Considering that there are currently 20 turrets and 8 modules in the game, there are a total of 160 turret module combinations you can place in one slot. If a player's ship can have up to 4 slots, that means there are 160 to the power of 4 combinations. That's 655,360,000. I know this number doesn't make any sense, but I had to show off some cool statistic. Oh, and I almost forgot. Each turret has eight upgrade levels, so this number should be raised to the power of eight. My computer can't handle such calculations. Now that you can equip various items on your ship, it's necessary to create a system for changing ships so the player isn't stuck with the same one throughout the entire game. Though, 
that could be a good idea for a challenge or achievement. In any case, I also plan to implement a faction system so that the enemy types change as well. Fighting some generic pirates becomes boring over time. Moreover, the player will be able to play for those they want. So for this, I will need to create a set of ships for each faction and also a mothership for each of them. Luckily, I've already done all this. The much more interesting task will be creating the entire interface and inventory logic related to it. This includes selecting a ship, purchasing it, the store, special offers, displaying stats, and placing all the items in their slots. Now that the ship purchasing and swapping system is in place, it needs to be connected to loading and transitioning to other scenes. Also, a huge number of bugs need to be fixed. I'll leave this pile of stuff behind the scene because it's not as interesting as the result. At first, I wanted to make a standard system where the player selects level 1, completes it, then moves on to level 2, and so on. But that also seemed too boring to me because it lacks freedom of choice. So, I decided to create a galactic map. Levels are represented as sectors or systems connected to each other. Access to a connected level is granted upon capturing a neighboring sector. Initially, I had the idea to make a turn-based strategy, where each faction takes turns capturing a selected sector, but that would stretch out development time. With ideas like this, I'll be making this game endlessly. However, over time, if people are interested, I might add it. Overall, creating such a system wasn't as challenging as I imagined. As I mentioned earlier, the game will have faction. For now, there are four, yellow, turquoise, purple, and white, or pink, depending on progression, which acts as a placeholder, or the same pirates. But they are not actually pirates. Technically, there's also a fifth faction that the player can create themselves. This will only be available in co-op mode. Overall, each faction has its own progression, where higher level ships generally have more turret slots, more health, defense, and shielding. But there are exceptions. There are very durable ships with only one slot, and conversely, light and unprotected speedy ships with many weapon slots. Additionally, each ship has its unique feature, which was implemented in an earlier version, but is currently disabled because it needs more work. Some ships, instead of placing turrets on themselves, place them on their drone. But in the future, the variety of unique features will increase. So, such ships will appear on levels. The harder the level, the tougher the ships and their equipment. Equipment is not initially tied to a specific enemy type, meaning any ship can have equipment of any level. But I felt that enemies needed to be distinguished somehow, or it would just seem like they're all the same enemies with different skins. So, I made it so that certain enemy ship types can only access equipment within a defined range. Also, I made it so that almost every level, except the starting one, has its unique device that enemies can appear with and from which it can drop. I almost forgot to talk about saving. Overall, I made a simple save system using JSON file because this is not an online game. And if someone wants to edit their save files, that's their choice. The main idea is that it saves all the player's item, information about the galactic map, specifically which sectors are captured, information about the player's ship and their balance. It all works as game slot, where creating a new slot starts a new game. All that's left is to make it so that all changes during the game are automatically saved and everything will be ready. Everything I've talked about is cool, but a new player entering the game will have their mind blown by such a number of game mechanics. So, when creating a new game, I need to add some kind of tutorial. All right, guys. Hello. Today we're gonna... I don't know why, but I spent a lot of time creating something like a cutscene where the player first launches from the mothership, then from another section of the ship, a helper robot flies out and asks the player to break nearby crate. For this, it provides a turret that automatically equips the player's ship. After this, the player gets to see the combats. After destroying the crates, which drop some loot, the drone asks the player to break asteroids as well, or rather, it doesn't ask anymore. A few seconds later, it flees from the player, and a group of ships flies by, destroying everything in its path, including the player. After dying, the player selects a faction and, in essence, respawns at their base. It seems I've implemented the core game mechanics, and it's time to release the update because the previous version of my game was blocked on the Play Store. The problem is I forgot the keys and passwords for my game build. So I'll have to contact Google support. I'm amazed my account hasn't been completely blocked yet, as I listed Grove Street in Africa as my place of residence. I later had to change it. The game, by the way, was blocked because I forgot to check the comply with COPPA standards box in the ad settings. 
That's right, my game has ads. About a week later, a dear Google employee sent me new keys, and now it's time for the most interesting part, adding multiplayer. I've never done anything like this before, and have no idea how to make multiplayer. So I'll have to turn to my best friend. My friend told me that the easiest way is to use Photon Network for implementing co-op mode, because unlike Unity Network, it already has almost all the necessary mechanisms implemented. First, I'll determine what type of multiplayer I need. In my opinion, local multiplayer with friends through a hotspot on a mobile device is best for my game. But it turned out that Photon has a ready-made room system. This means players will be able to play from anywhere in the world. All they'll need is the internet. To connect, they'll need to enter a room code. Since this functionality is already implemented, I won't reinvent the wheel because I've already spent enough time on this update and video. Maybe local multiplayer is a problem for my future. So initially, the player enters their name. Then they choose whether they are a host or a client. After that, on the host side, they can copy the room. While on the client side, they can paste this code to join. I got bored and decided to add customization for their faction and a view of the nicknames of players who played on this save. I also wanted to add permission settings for clients, but I'll leave that for later since it's not an essential feature. Somehow, I created a room system and added a chat. At this stage, my brain started melting, but there was still the synchronization of gameplay itself, the most tedious part. Overall, if you're using Photon Network, there's nothing difficult about this, but it took me a long time to understand how it all works and what rules it follows. Moreover, I needed to integrate my optimization system into the multiplayer. I haven't talked about this optimization system, so now's the time. At the beginning, as soon as the player enters a level, my level generator determines the maximum number of ships on the level and creates that many ships of each type, turning them all off. Then, as needed, using an ID, I can call a ship from the queue, place it in the required location, and activate it. This is called Object Pool, where I create pools for each type of ship and create the illusion that these ships are constantly being created. This way, Unity finds it much easier to work with already created objects. Additionally, they don't need to be destroyed, which makes things easier for the garbage collector. So I now need to implement this system in multiplayer, apply it to almost all objects on the scene. Again, this took quite a lot of time. Also, don't forget that it was necessary to synchronize the appearance of ships, asteroids, bosses, their movements, shooting, health, level information, pickup items, level speed, level state, player states, ship equipment. I'm very happy that this stage of development is over. Oh no, wait. I need to fix a bunch of bugs that can only be tracked through testing. And testing can only be done by uploading the build to several smartphones and then connecting one to the other. It's a nightmare. I don't recommend it to anyone. But now I can't express how happy I am that everything works. I hope I don't run into problems uploading the game to the PlayStation.